understand that? How can we understand that, that every day, every mitzvah, and we're talking thousands of mitzvahs then every day, and we're talking more unlimited and more unlimited. What does that look like in the universe? Can you describe a little bit what that mitzvah looks like? like I, te I tell you, that, right? this, this is a problematic question for one reason. I tell you why. The Gemara asks, Hashem told us in the Torah all the punishments of Gehenom and the Kafakela and the Gilgulim, the reincarnation. This is a part of the Kabbalah. But not that much he told us about heaven and the Olam Abba. We know only very limited amount of information. Maybe three or four verses, the entire Torah about the reward of the righteous people. What do we know? Righteous people have a special crown and they enjoy the greatness of God. So how do we have... Wait, wait, so what's the point? So the question that is obvious, why when it comes to the punishment so much information and when it comes to the reward two, three sentences? The answer is, you cannot explain to a person that is basar vadam, flesh, and is physical, and is subject to the laws of nature, and is half animal, even though he has a divine soul that is limited under the laws of nature in the body, you cannot explain him reward of a pure spiritual world. He's unable to understand it. It's like putting English in a Hebrew computer or, or Russian. The computer doesn't know what you want. It makes sense to you, but the computer doesn't understand. We are this computer. We don't have the capacity, the ability to understand something 100% spiritual. We don't even understand one tiny reward of one tiny mitzvah. Nevertheless, what you ask me, billions and trillions and trillions of, of accumulate reward in the afterlife. We don't know. But that's what we're working for. But, but, one thing we do know. We don't know exactly what this pleasure going to be, because in this world you cannot taste from it. You don't know. If I never ate something, uh, I don't know, some Georgian food in Georgia, I don't know what it is. And I see my Georgian friends, when they speak about it, their eyes coming out. And the saliva are dripping. And they say, I never tasted such food. And they try to explain to me in words what the delicious food is. I don't understand what they're talking about. When will I understand? The first bite I take it. Oh, Mr. Shvili, now I know what you say. You understand? Now I got it. Now, one thing I do know. If in the book of God, he told me that one hour over there, it's already greater than all the pleasures I do know from the beginning of this world until the end of this world of all the people combined will not be equal to one hour of that pleasure. I don't need more than that. That's already enough. No. We go on a minimum. We go on a minimum. No, I say to you something. I give you an example. Let's say a worker makes ten dollars an hour all his life. He works in dirty jobs. Now they offer him to do a job in the house of Bill Gates, <laughs> the richest guy in America. So now he doesn't ask Bill Gates how much you're gonna pay me an hour, because he knows it's definitely gonna be better than the pizza shop I'm working for. <laughs> What can it be? It can be a thousand an hour, it can be five hundred an hour, it can be a hundred an hour. You know what? It can be fifty an hour. It won't be ten. For his honor, he won't make himself look like a low life giving me ten dollars an hour. I don't need to ask. If I come to a poor guy, I want to know. Maybe you give me seven dollars, I work for free. But there's a, so when Hashem promises a reward, for sure it's better than anything we can imagine. We don't need to understand it right now. We do know that when God called this great, for sure it's so great. Maybe we don't have enough positive incentive to bring Mashiach faster. It's not about bringing Mashiach, with or without Mashiach. What? We're not talking about Mashiach bichlal. Every day we're davening for Mashiach in the whole Why are we daven for Mashiach? Why? Do you know why we daven for Mashiach? Because all about the coming and we're all working. But why? Why are we praying for Mashiach? Why? Why we want Mashiach? I say to myself, I say to myself, an average Jew should hope that Mashiach doesn't come. <laughs> should pray, Hashem, if you have a mercy on us, delay Mashiach for another eight years until I die. Why? Based on the requirements and the time when Mashiach arrives, how ready we have to be, we're far away from being ready. And the Torah says, Uva le Tzion Goel, 
לשווה פשע ביעקב. The Savior comes only to the Jews who made full repentance. I don't think I made full repentance yet, far away from it, and most of the Jews I met in my life, almost all of them, are far away from making a complete repentance, so I'm afraid of Mashiach, tell you the truth. We're not allowed to say, chas v'shalom, that Mashiach won't come, because it's against the principle of Judaism. So we have to pray, because Hashem wants Mashiach to come. And if Hashem wanted, who am I not to want it? But I'm saying logically, logically, not emotionally. Emotionally, I have to go with what Hashem wants. Logically, why exactly I want Mashiach for? If he comes, I may get destroyed for eternity. I'm afraid to be, uh, maybe now. We have, we have a tikkun to make. Each of us have our tikkun to make. <laughs> so everyone will make our tikkun together with Aftos. If, if, if. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, it's far from getting done. I have to run. I have another lecture. Thank you very much. Next week, I'm not here. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you very much.